So now we'll write our do swap method. So I'll create a private void do swap. We'll take in potion. Again, we're going to use our current potion, and the potion will also be our target potion. And now this is going to be used to actually move the indexes of the potions. So if I jump back into my game again, I think the best way to explain what we're going to do here is by swapping the X and Y index of the potion that you're starting with with the potion that you're moving to, you're able to basically set new locations for them and then we'll do a physical movement to align them with those new locations. And in order to do that, we use three points of reference. We use a temporary point to store one of the, one of the locations and then we can overwrite one with the other and then we can use that temp location to restore the original. So. That probably sounded like a lot of words. <laughs> Hopefully that made sense, but if it didn't, the code usually makes this quite a bit more obvious. So we'll go through that now. So game object temp. Now we want to get the game object of a location on the board. So we're going to say potion board, get our current potions X index and our current potions Y index. And we're going to get the potion. So we're going to get the game object that's at this location on the board. We're going to store that here. And then we're going to move our current potion because we've now stored that location to our target location. So we'll say potion board, current potion X index, and current potion Y index, dot potion. So we're getting the potion here and it's gonna be equal to, and we're just setting it to the same thing, but for the target. So this is gonna be the target and the target as well. So what we've done here is we've taken the potion at this location and we've overridden it with the values of the potion in our target location. So now we just need to set our target location as well. So I'm just going to copy this because it's a bit to type and it makes it a bit easier. So we're going to say our potion at our target location becomes the location of our temp. So we remember because we stored this as our beginning potion location. So the two have swapped around now and now we just need to update the indices of both of them. So this will be update indices. And we're going to say int, and we'll do the exact same thing. We create a temp of the index, current potion dot x index, int temp y index equals current potion dot y index. And then we're going to set the current potion dot x index to the target potion dot x index. Do the same again for the y index and then do for our target, just as we did before, set the target equal to the temp x index and the same for our y index. And that then needs to be x. Okay, so now we have everything on the board updated, but nothing is physically moved around. So now is when we would call the actual process of moving the potion around. And remember I said at the start here that we were gonna write the actual movement inside of our potion script. So we'll do that step now. We're going to create a very simple script. That's gonna be a public void move to target, vector two, and we'll call this target position, or we'll just target pause. And in there, we're going to start a coroutine, and that coroutine is going to be our move coroutine. And that will take in the target pause that we're trying to get to. We can create that now as well. Create a private i enumerator, and we'll call move coroutine. It will take a vector two of the target pause. And now we created a variable a little while ago called is moving. We're going to use that is moving now just to say we're actually physically moving the potion and not to do anything else. So we'll say is moving is equal to true. And we'll give this a duration. We want this to move over a period of time. I'm gonna give it 0.2f. We could also create this as a global variable as well and we could assign that and play within the inspector. I just kinda of like 0.2f, but this is basically gonna be the time taken to perform the animation of moving the potion around. So now we can say vector two start position. This is the position we're gonna be moving from. So obviously our transform.position is the current location. And then we'll add a float called elapsed time. And we're gonna set that to zero. And then we'll say while elapsed time is less than duration. So while our elapsed time is less than the time taken to do this animation, then we're going to move it over that time. So we'll say elapsed time divided by duration transform.position equals vector2.lerp, the start position to the target position over the space of t, which is our time. Then we'll say elapsed time plus equals time.delta time. 
And finally, yield return null, because we're not actually trying to get anything out of this. Now, there is a slightly weird interaction here where you can end up with decimal point variables on your x rather than a complete integer value. So once that process is finished, we're just going to say transform.position equals target position. And that's just to force it into that location. And then we can set is moving to false. And we've moved our potion from location A to location B. And now this moves one of our potions to a target destination. So in our potion board, all we need to do is call that method on both of the potions to the opposite location and they'll swap it with each other. So the way we do that is by getting our current potion, I'm gonna call the move to target method, which is going to take in the potion from our potion board. And we just need to give it the location that we're trying to move to. So it'll be target position dot X index and target potion dot Y index. And then we're grabbing the potion from there dot transform dot position and a bracket. And then that will move our current potion to our target potion. And then we just do the reverse. So we'll do this with our target potion. You're going to be moving to our current potions location. And so now that we've written that, we can go back up to our swap potion. We can call this do swap method. We'll take in our current potion and our target potion. And then the last step we have to do is call this process matches. So we've swapped our potions around now. We just want to see whether we actually do have a match. And if we don't have a match, then we want to rotate these back to their original locations. So I'm going to create a private I enumerator here that we're going to call process matches. Again, as always, we're going to be taking in the current potion and the potion that we're calling our target potion. And we're gonna wait for that 0.2 seconds before we attempt to do any matches, because if you don't wait, it will just immediately take the action. And if we're gonna be deleting a potion, let's say, and refilling the board, the moment you clicked and moved it to a different location, it would automatically start to delete the potion. So for starters, let's just yield return new wait for seconds of 0.2F. So that will wait for two seconds before it then attempts to check whether we have a match. So we'll say has match. We're gonna call our check board method. And then we're basically gonna say if we don't have a match. So if you've moved a potion from location A to location B, but it doesn't form a three match, then we wanna swap back to the previous location. So we can do that by just calling the reverse. So we'll call it back to the way it was, which is saying current potion and target potion. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna swap it back to the original location. It's gonna update all its indices because it's calling effectively everything we're doing to do the original swap just in reverse. And then finally, we'll set is processing move to false here so that we can now make another move after that process. So I'm going to go up to here now where we've got our swap potion and we've got our start coroutine. So we can make this a actual method now. Start coroutine process matches and that process matches is going to take the current potion and the target potion. And we just have to close off one more bracket there. Now we have all the logic to do all the potion swapping and do everything that's needed to work out whether there's a variance, but we never actually have a way to initially set this select potion method. And we're gonna do this at the board level. And the reason why you do this at the board level rather than the potion level is because if you set this on the potion and there's 48 potions on the board, it's gonna call that method 48 times. So we only wanna call it from the potion board because it's the master of this. So we scroll right up to the top where we've got our awake and start methods. And I'm gonna create a void update method so in here we'll say if input dot get mouse button down of zero, which is a left click, then what we want to do is shoot a ray out. So ray equals camera dot main dot screen point to ray input at the mouse position that we just clicked. Then we want to get a ray cast hit 2D and we'll call that hit. So this is the thing that you've just clicked on and we'll say physics 2D dot ray cast and we're going from the ray origin point to the ray direction and now we just need to check to see whether what we clicked on the screen actually is something that we care about so we'll say if hit dot collider is not equal to null so we have clicked something that actually has a collider on it and hit dot collider dot game object has a get component of the potion on it so we want to know if there's actually a potion that we've clicked if there isn't a person that we've clicked, then we've clicked something that just isn't important to us. Oh, there's a typo on there. Now, when we're clicking, we also just want to make sure we aren't currently doing anything. So if processing move, then we just want to return at this point because we don't want it to try and process multiple moves. But if we aren't processing move, 
then we can say potion, potion equals hit dot collider dot game object dot get component of the potion that we just clicked on. And I might just add a debug log statement here that says I have clicked a potion, it is, and we'll add the plus potion dot game object. And then finally, seeing as we've clicked a potion, we can call select potion, and we'll put that on for the potion. Now very quickly, if I'm in my game here and I'm starting to click around, you'll see I don't seem to be actually clicking and hitting anything, um, which is interesting. And the reason why that's the case is because I've not yet put any 2D colliders on them. So for us to be able to hit something, we have to have colliders on them. So I can add a box 2D collider here. And if I just go in, you'll, you'll see it automatically creates the size just sort of perfect to the board. So I don't need to worry about making that any different. We can just leave it as it defaults it to. And I've just realized a brief little error I had in here, which is inside of here in my move coroutine on my potion script, I'm using a local target pos rather than the target pos that I pass into this method. So just make sure you use that here and on the transform position when you're setting it, because I never actually set this target pos, I believe. I think it just ends up being nothing and just moves it to the location of zero, zero, which puts it in the middle of your board. You, you don't want that. So make sure you use that correct target pos and then jumping into our game, there's a few things we should see now. If I click on my potion board and I left click once, I should see that it selects a potion, that's good. If I click it again, should unselect the potion. If I click a white potion and I try to move it to a location that's just off the board, it unselects the potion, doesn't let me do that. If I try to click the white potion and move it to a location that it doesn't match in, we swap it to it and then we unswap it straight back because there's no matches here. And if I've got a three match by clicking and moving up, then it should match it to that new location. And this is the point where we would then add points and remove this and refill the board and everything. But for now, that's effectively what we're trying to do. So you can now actually click around and play something, which is pretty great. And if you look here, you'll also see I've got, you know, normal vertical matches popping up in my debug logs. At this point as well, you will find that if you've done a match over this and then you then try to match a different one on it, it doesn't work. But because we're gonna be deleting these out and refilling the boards, this won't be a problem later on. It's just a problem while it's in this half state. And that's it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one. As always, I wanna give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. We have Lanky Moose, Castle Coders, and Zoop in the silver tier. Thank you guys for sticking with me while I've been adjusting to a new job and I will see you guys in the next video.